this episode, I'm going to cover that one very important step, which is cleaning. Yeah, I know. Cleaning airbrushes is a drag. But if you keep your airbrushes well maintained, you'll have a lot less frustration. When it comes to cleaning, there's usually one of three different reasons why you need to clean your airbrush. The first being a color change. You're working on something, you want to change from one color to the other. The second being a clog. You're trying to paint something, you go to paint, and paint's kind of coming out, it's working, but it may be splattery or something. It's just not working properly. The third being for no operation whatsoever. You go to use it and it's just not working at all. It's completely clogged, nothing's coming out, and it needs a deep cleaning. Before I explain how to deal with those three types of cleanings, let's talk a little bit about the tools and equipment I use for cleaning my airbrushes. To begin with, you're gonna need a solvent. It depends on what kind of paint you're using as to which solvent you'll use. For acrylic paints, I prefer Media's airbrush cleaner. Yes, you can use Windex and some other things like that, but I have found better performance if you use a real cleaner. You can also use alcohol and or lacquer thinner depending on what paint you're using. For this series, I've stuck with acrylics, so I'm just using this cleaner. For ease of use, you can transfer the cleaners to a squeezy bottle. I learned about this from my friends at Punish Props, and it just makes things a little quicker and handy. A cleaning pot is pretty essential. This one was really inexpensive, less than $10. It's essential to have some place you can spray your airbrush into while you're cleaning it, and it doesn't get all over everything. For cleaning out hard to reach places, I really like these pointy Q-tips. They're called nail tees. A couple other things for some heavy duty cleaning, nylon brushes and a nozzle cleaning needle. And finally, an ultrasonic cleaner. It's meant for jewelry, but it works great for airbrushes. Now you don't have to have all that stuff, but it definitely can be helpful. The best thing to do before teaching how to clean one is just getting familiar with the different parts and how it goes together. This is the rear cap. That comes off simply. This is the lock nut for the needle. You can twist that till it's loose and pull the needle straight out. The lock nut you can tighten back on a little bit so it doesn't fall off or you can remove it all the way. It doesn't really matter. You can pull out the trigger because at this point nothing's holding it in. This is the needle spring guide. It holds the spring in place with the needle chuck. That's what applies pressure against the trigger when you pull it back. To remove it, unscrew it. The spring will come with it as well and the chucking guide. That's all the rear pieces taken off. The Neo has a removable paint cup, so that can be removed too. Next up front is the crown needle cap, which is a little cap on the end. Then the nozzle cap. And when you remove that, you'll see the nozzle tip. Some other airbrushes, the nozzle itself is removable from the barrel of the airbrush. With the Neo, it isn't. So to remove the tip, you need to use this tiny little wrench. Once it's loose, you should be able to take it off by hand. On the Neo, the hose connector itself can be removed. It's one piece. So that's all of the parts to the Neo. Just put it all back together the way you took it apart. These only have to be hand tightened. The tip can be tricky, so make sure you get it threaded in there right. Make sure to not over tighten it. There's an O-ring in there that you want to have seated well but not squished out. The nozzle cap back on, then the crown cap, paint reservoir. When you put the chucking guide back into the barrel of the airbrush, you want to make sure this little tab right here is sticking up through the slot in the top of the barrel. So insert that in and make sure that's sticking up through. Then you can add the spring and the spring guide and then tighten it all back in. Again, hand tight is usually sufficient. If you have it inserted right, you'll be able to pull back on the guide and it'll push forward because of the tension of the spring. You can add the needle chuck nut back on there. Don't tighten it though, you just want it on there loose so the needle will actually slip through. To add your trigger back, you want to pull back on the chucking guide. Insert the trigger, make sure the slot is going with the direction of the needle. And it should depress and pull back. To insert your needle, just push it in until it won't go any further. You don't have to jam it in there hard, just nice and snug. Tighten up the chucking nut. You should see that action of it working when you're pulling back. Don't forget the cap, protect that needle. Because if you drop this and that needle hits the floor, it's gonna bend. I know I've done that before. Now that I've gotten you a little more comfortable with all the different parts of the airbrush and breaking it down and putting it back together, let's talk about that first step, cleaning for a color change. First step is to dump the unused paint back into the paint container so you save as much paint as possible. Next, I'll take a piece of a blue towel or a paper towel, whatever you have. Just wipe that reservoir out as much as possible. Since this is acrylic paint, I'm gonna just start with some water to flush it out. I'll do that a couple times while also cleaning the reservoir with a pointed Q-tip. You can see that it's pretty clear now. Pull out the needle. 
Take a look at the needle, see if there's any paint on there. Clean the needle, I'm just gonna use a little bit of airbrush cleaner on the rag. Just wipe it down. Be careful not to uh, poke yourself or bend your needle. There's still gonna be a little bit of paint trapped in there because the needle blocks the bottom part of the reservoir. So I'll add a little cleaner in there and then clean it again. It's gonna drip a little since the needle's not in there. And then finally clean up the outside of the tip. Before I can reinsert the needle, I need to put the trigger back in and then the needle can be reinserted. Then I can run a final rinse of cleaner. If you want to just do a final check, you can add a little bit of water or cleaner back into the reservoir, then spray onto a clear piece of material. And if it comes out clear, you're good to go. So now that you're familiar with the color change operation, let's talk about clogs. Cleaning for a clog is very similar. You're going to want to do all those same steps, but we'll go a little further. While you have the needle out, go ahead and remove the nozzle cap. Clean out anything that you see in there, then remove the nozzle. While you have the nozzle out and using a little bit of your airbrush cleaner, use the nozzle cleaner, stick it in there, rotate it, push it in and out. And if there's any dried stuck on paint in there, it'll come out. Once that's cleaned out, then with the main barrel, utilize your cleaning brush with a little bit of cleaner and run that brush in and out of the main barrel. If you're using an airbrush that has a removable nozzle piece and not just the tip, you'll be able to do the same thing, but with the whole tip. Then reassemble and test it and see if it's working from there. If you find yourself in that third scenario where your airbrush is just completely gunked up and not working at all, maybe you forgot to clean it and it sat for a couple months, the next step would be the sonic cleaner. For the sonic cleaner, I usually use a dilution of half the amount of water to half the amount of solvent. For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show water here because my airbrush is actually already clean. The parts I throw in the cleaner are the caps. For the Neo, I take off the trigger assembly. I usually remove the paint cup, but throw that in there as well. The chucking guide and spring usually don't need to go in there. You can take a look at them and see if they have a bunch of stuff caked on them, then you can throw it in there. This nozzle has already been removed. You want to throw the nozzle in there. You can throw this whole body in there. You have to be careful with this because there are internal O-rings in this. And if this sits in solvent for too long, it could do damage to those O-rings. So make sure you only do it for a limited time. Once those are in there, you can set your cleaner. I usually do for the full amount and then give it a go. Once it's done, look at your parts, inspect them. If they look clean, then they're ready to go. If there's more caked on there still, you might have to run it more cycles until they're as clean as you need them to be. Once they're completely done, you can rinse them a little bit with water and then dry them off. Before you reassemble your airbrush after a sonic cleaning, you wanna make sure to drop some lube in the appropriate places. You're gonna to wanna to put it on the needle packing O-ring, which is inside the barrel, there where the needle slips in through the barrel. And then also on top of the trigger assembly right there. So that's it for the three reasons I mentioned for cleaning. Although there is a fourth reason, it's really good practice to clean your airbrush when you're done with it. My suggestion and what I always do is I clean it like I'm cleaning it for a clog. If you do all that, it'll be ready to go the next time. If you made it through all four parts of this series, my hope wasn't to be super technical and show you the exact how to airbrush, but mostly to get you familiar with all the equipment and some basics so that you would at least maybe want to attempt it yourself. Thanks so much for watching if you got this far. As always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a subscription to my channel if you want more of this kind of content. Until next time, see you later.